Well, Joe Biden is making his strategy pretty clear. To win the White House, he will have to win the Rust Belt battleground states. And that's why in a few hours, he's holding a major rally in Philadelphia. This is the home of his new campaign headquarters, a Democratic stronghold in a state that Donald Trump took to cement his 2016 win. We're talking, of course, about Pennsylvania. And this is the final leg of his three-week campaign kickoff. It's happening as he opens an even wider lead in Democratic polling. CNN political reporter Arlette Sines joins us live in Philadelphia, still a few hours out from the start of the event, but uh, you're seeing some, some movement around here. Yeah, some folks are starting to arrive for the event here. And in a few hours, Joe Biden will be holding his first uh, major official kickoff rally of his campaign. And a short while ago, we received some excerpts of his remarks that he's going to make with a central message of unity. Biden will say that if Americans want a president who spews hate, they don't need him saying that the current president does just that. And Biden saying that he's going to present a different path for Democrats, Republicans and independents. With the first three weeks of his 2020 run behind him, Joe Biden turning to a new phase in his campaign. I'll be president for all America, not just the base. First, a campaign headquarters and kickoff rally in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, a state Democrats lost to Donald Trump in 2016, and one where Biden sees an opening. A recent poll found Biden beating Trump in a head-to-head -head matchup there by 11 points. If I'm going to be able to beat Donald Trump in 2020, it's going to happen here. In the early weeks of his campaign, Biden enjoying his stronger than expected frontrunner status, topping national polls, lining up endorsements in key early states, and raking in more money in the first 24 hours than any of his Democratic rivals. Nice to see you again. Good to see you again. <laughs> He's taken his brand of politics to six states across the country, from an ice cream shop in Iowa to fielding voters' questions in a New Hampshire backyard. Folks, we can change this again, and the best way to change it, and I'm not joking, is to get Donald Trump out of that office. Biden framing his campaign as a showdown with President Trump, a move that's drawn the president's ire. How do you beat Joe Biden? I think we beat him easily. The former vice president also facing friendly fire from his Democratic opponents. I disagree with him. Um, that crime bill, that 1994 crime bill, um, it, it did contribute to mass incarceration in our country. No, I don't think that Joe is the most progressive uh, uh, candidate uh, in this race. Biden largely aiming to stay above the fray. I will not speak ill of any of the Democratic candidates. I will not do it. We thank Arlette Sines for that report. Joining us now to talk about this, Simone Sanders, senior advisor to the Joe Biden presidential campaign. Uh, Simone, hello to you. Hello, Victor. How are you? Very well, thank you. First obvious question, you were the 2016 uh, national spokesperson for the Bernie Sanders campaign. Why are you now on Team Biden? Well, look, I think uh, Vice President Biden is going to show everyone today uh, exactly why I decided to join the campaign. Look, he, we are in a fight for the soul of this nation. And uh, I believe that this is a pivotal point, just not in American history, but in the world history. We have to make a decision about who it is that we want to be, where it is we're going to go. And I believe that Vice President Biden uh, has the right vision uh, to take us there. So I'm very excited to be on Team Biden. I'm excited to be here in Philadelphia, Victor. Okay, uh -huh. we are kicking off officially our campaign today and I, I really think what you're going to hear from the vice president is a bookend on these themes that you've been hearing from us since he first um, okay. announced that he is running all right I, I don't have much time with you and and I wanted to get that out of the way because I'm sure the viewers have that obvious question but let me talk about um, uh, the vice president here and we heard from Senator uh, Harris uh, in that uh, piece from Arlette about uh, her refuting a uh, claim that the vice president made this week that the 1994 crime bill that he wrote did not um, contribute to mass incarceration. I want you to listen to former President Bill Clinton. This is uh, President Clinton who signed that into law in 2015. I signed a bill that made the problem worse. And I want to admit it. In that bill, there were longer sentences. And most of these people are in prison under state law, but the federal law set a trend. And that was overdone. We were wrong about that. 
President Clinton says that, that they were wrong about that. Senator Harris has said that it contributed to mass incarceration. Why is it uh, Vice President Biden a admitting what we're hearing from the former president? Well, look, I think what we can go back to Vice President Biden's comments at the National Action Network breakfast in January, where he noted um, that the, the, the crime bill, by way of this disparity between crack and powder cocaine, trapped an entire generation of people. Look, I think many people will tell you across the country, Victor, black folks included, um, that, the, that the crime bill and the reaction to what was happening in the early 90s, now look, I, wasn't, I was only about three or four, but I'm a student of history. What was happening in the early 90s, um, the reaction was was an overcorrection to a very real issue. But we are going to see some policy rollouts from um, our campaign very soon, Victor. I know folks have questions so, about so, uh, what uh, is Vice President Biden's criminal justice is policy. It, is it now the, the, those are going to come. Now but I mean, the, campaign's the campaign's position that the crime bill did contribute to mass incarceration? Victor, I think the vice with the vi the vice president, uh, his comments speak for themselves. What is very well, clear his, is but his this, comment that was that it does not contribute to mass incarceration. The former president who signed his, it said and, it and did. If we, and if, look, Victor, if we play the whole clip, what he also said was, his comment was, what he also said was, that the majority of folks that are incarcerated were incarcerated at the state level. And there's and a that reason for that. Let me put up, let me put up the truth in sentencing and sentencing incentives and there, here. And I mean, there is a reason but for that. But there's a reason. Let me put it up. I let mean, me put, just, it, put it up on the screen, guys, the truth in sentencing section of the 1994 crime bill. This is page 21. It incentivized... Uh, it offered billions of dollars to build new uh, correctional facilities if states would increase the percentage of convicted violent offenders, increase the average prison time, increase the percentage of the sentence was there. Did this bill not incentivize putting more people in jail and keeping them there longer? The, uh, Victor, I no, I am not going to sit here and tell you the crime bill was perfect. There was some there was some really great preventative things that it did. It took on the NRA, and then there was an overcorrection. What you're describing was an overcorrection. There was a reach. Some folks went too far. The bill wasn't perfect. Republicans fought to put a lot of things in that bill. Democrats fought, Democrats fought to get a lot of things out of the bill. But at the end of the day, Victor, at the end of the day, no one is suggesting that what has happened, what has ravaged communities um, over the last 27 yeah. years, uh, does not need to be fixed. No one is suggesting that there is not a real issue, there's not a real problem or a real right. issue. And I'm here to tell you the Vice President Biden will have roll out. You'll see a criminal justice policy soon. We are going to continue to have to have this conversation about the crime bill um, all all right. throughout the campaign trail. But we're also going to put forward some policies, Victor. So just well, wait and see. Give us a minute. Wait we, and see. We will look forward to those. Simone Sanders, thanks so much.